Welcome everybody to a brand new Blu-ray and DVD out and about video today. And this week sees the release of the action sequel, oh yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do, what you gonna do when they come for you. Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do, what you gonna do when they come for you. Yeah, you guys know what I'm talking about. Bad Boys for Life is hitting store shelves along with the dramatic horror tale The Turning, the action comedy The Gentleman, as well as the fourth and final installment in the Ip Man series, Ip Man 4, is releasing, and Scream Factory is releasing a collector's edition Blu-ray release of the 1961 horror film The Curse of the Werewolf, plus much much more. So let's go see the deals, exclusives, and we're at our first location, Walmart. So let's go in and see what they got. Oh yeah, uh, one more thing I forgot to tell you guys before I headed in. So if you guys have been keeping up with the videos, the out and about and everything that has been going on with the shutdown and the pandemic. Uh, everything is really crazy right now. And people are very scared and they're panicked and they're... There's a lot of fear out there in the world right now, guys. And I've been continuing to do these videos as sort of a way to give you guys entertainment, but at the same time, you know, kind of ease my mind as well. And I've gotten a lot of pushback from a lot of people who have not been the happiest that I've been doing these videos, but some of you guys have ended up saying to me, hey, it's fine if you go and do the videos, but wear protective gear, man. Wear the face mask. Wear the masks. Uh, you know, wear gloves. You know, do this stuff so that you're not endangering yourself and endangering others. And, you know, I'm a really stubborn guy. <laughs> I, I honestly am. Tr truth be told, if you were to ask a lot of my really close friends, uh, my girlfriend, I am a pretty damn stubborn dude, man. Sometimes that can be an advantage and other times that can be a hindrance. And this time around, it's definitely been a hindrance. And I've been slow to kind of adopt some of the safety stuff that I probably should have from the very beginning. And that's on me. That's my fault. And I fully recognize that. And I want to apologize to you guys for that. But I've now heard you guys loud and clear. On top of that, there's also an order from our governor uh, who has said, you know, that we have to wear face masks in public places if we can't social distance properly. So what I'm going to be doing, at least for the time being, while this shutdown and pandemic stuff is really happening, is... I am going to be wearing a mask. I, I have a couple of masks with me. They're reusable masks. I, I do wash them. So I will be using that. I also bought uh, some latex gloves. I bought some latex gloves that I will be putting on, using in the store. And then when I'm done with doing the out and about in that particular store, I'm going to take off the gloves and I'm going to use my hand sanitizer and then re-put on new gloves when I go into a new store, take them off afterwards, sanitizer, the whole deal. So that's what I'll be doing from now on in the videos, just so you guys know. It's a peace of mind for you guys that I'm staying safe out there and not trying to spread anything to other people or get infected myself and yet being able to still do the videos and to still give you guys some type of entertainment as well. So it's it's pretty much a win-win on both sides here. So I hope you guys are okay with this plan. I mean, I'm doing it regardless, but I wanted to let you guys know really what's going down. And I still appreciate the support from a lot of you guys and the concern that you have for me and others. Sometimes the concern gets 
a little bit crazy and I've been called a lot of names and people have attacked me but there's a lot of you who are very kind and are very nice about it and really go out of your way to express your concerns and your fear without attacking me at the same time so I appreciate that very much thank you so much but yes like I said I'll be wearing the masks now when I'm inside there I'll be wearing the gloves changing them out constantly and still using hand sanitizer as well so that's that's the plan guys so I'm gonna put all of this stuff on before I head in so let me put all of this new paraphernalia on it's a new world got to get used to it and uh once i do that let's check out the movies all right everybody we are under the new releases here and the first thing i'm seeing is they have the 4k ultra hd blu-ray digital of bad boys for life for 27.96 the blu-ray dvd digital for 22.96 the DVD digital for $17.96 over here and they also have this three movie collection Blu-ray and digital of all three of the Bad Boys movies for $29.96 here as well. So you can own the trilogy, all of them on Blu-ray together if you guys want to. I would kind of hold off on this and the reason why is I heard a rumor that they're going to make a fourth movie so why buy the three movie collection unless you're not interested in the fourth movie and you just only care about the three then go right ahead but yeah so they do have this right here three movie collection as well but i got a chance to watch this movie bad boys for life on amazon prime and I was really interested in watching this movie. I didn't get a chance to watch it in the theater, but I really wanted a chance to watch this. And I think for me, I really love those Bad Boys movies. Uh, the first one coming out in 95 really was sort of a red hot hit, man, for like Martin Lawrence really coming out of the comedy stuff and doing action you had Will Smith, who was the, the comedy guy from Fresh Prince, and him, him doing sort of the whole action stuff as well. And it was, it was a risk. It was a little bit of a gamble, but it really paid off, man. Under Michael Bay's direction, the movie was electric, dude. It, it still is a really great action movie to this day, man. And then the second one, years later, I think came out in 2003. And... That movie is just balls out craziness. It's, it's everything that the first movie is, but it's even more explosions, more comedy, more crazy action. It, it's just really just nuts, dude. They went to the next level with that, and it was really fantastic, dude. And I remember after watching Bad Boys 2, I thought to myself, dude, when is the next Bad Boys movie? I mean, come on, man. I, we, when is the next one? Dude, I'm jonesing for the third film. And it took so long for that film to ever even see the light of day, man. And I was waiting for years, dude. You know, there would be hints and rumors that they were making another one, and then it would stop or there those were false hopes you know michael bay kept doing the transformers movies and he had no interest in coming back to the bad boys franchise and other directors come came and went uh scripts sort of came and went as well and it just really felt like will smith was no longer interested and the only one that was really fighting for this was martin lawrence for years and I thought ah okay there we're never gonna get this dude we're never gonna get another film in the franchise and I love those first two movies and I just have to I just have to deal with it and then suddenly I'm hearing rumors of like okay Will Smith is interested in it again there's a script new directors are coming on board and then the film is finally like you know, like shh you know, like shooting and I'm thinking like holy shit, this is actually going to happen, dude. And it did. And uh, you know what, man? It, it was, a, it was a re really a great joy to watch this movie. 
I'm not gonna lie, it was a really great joy to watch this thing and I really had a good time watching it. I really honestly did. It was a fun watch to see the sort of gang back together. Will Smith, Martin Lawrence, Joe Pantoliano is back as well. The Mr. Joey Pants here that I freaking love. I love that guy to death. All of the elements were there. You had the action, the comedy again. And I was really excited starting to watch this and seeing the two of them together. The chemistry is still there to a certain degree. But I have to admit, and I'm going to say this, I, I think the movie, honestly, in my own estimation, I think the movie is the lesser of all of the trilogy so far. It really honestly is. And that's just my honest opinion. It really is the less of all three of the films. Now, why do I say that? I, I, think the, I think the action here is weak compared to the other two films. I think the comedy is not as good as those other two movies as well. And I kind of feel like when I'm watching the movie, it kind of feels like Martin Lawrence and Will Smith has kind of lost a step or two. Is it just me? Like, I know they're older now, and I know that they've done other projects and they're not like they once were but it almost felt like they've almost sort of entered into that territory of we're sort of too old for this shit type of thing you know what i mean like they're too old to be doing this and that's sort of where the comedy is coming from now it's kind of sort of entered lethal weapon t territory right it kind of has it's got elements of like Lethal Weapon 3 in here and even Lethal Weapon 4 of like a younger generation of people coming up and they're sort of the old dogs now and I guess that's where they kind of had to go but I don't know man I, I this movie is, is a real conundrum to me because I kind of enjoyed it but at the same time I recognize that it's it's a lesser bad boys movie at the same time that it's not the quality is not as there as it once was and the magic is kind of gone in a lot of ways. It was still great to see the two together. But at the same time, I kind of almost wish they didn't have done this. So I have a great imagination of, of sort of what would have been. You know what I mean? It's an interesting movie. I still enjoy it. If you're a fan of the other two Bad Boys movies, definitely give it a look. But um, just wasn't feeling this one as I wanted to it's still good I had a good time but it's definitely in the we're too old for this shit category and Martin Lawrence is definitely the Danny Glover type now dude definitely man there's no denying that one dude hmm. then over here I'm seeing they have the blu-ray DVD digital of like a boss for 1996 the DVD for $17.96 and I got a chance to watch this one on Amazon Prime and oh god what the hell was I thinking dude I mean, oh god why why do I punish myself why this movie dude man ah oh, god okay let's talk about this thing so basically the movie is about Rose Byrne and Tiffany Haddish and they kind of create this makeup company company this small time makeup company and there's this sort of ruthless boss CEO played by Selma Hayek who's trying to sort of take over their company and sort of split them apart and it's sort of the comedy of that and this movie had the potential to be kind of funny it did but boy was it really cringeworthy dude really there's not much of a plot here and even them trying to be funny the the jokes feel so forced it feels like they're just improvising the entire movie like tiffany haddish and rose byrne are good actresses they're not bad but it just feels like they're just being goofy for goofy sake that it's just immature joke after immature joke and there tries to be a message at the end of the movie about strong females, but it's such a washed out message when you have such stupidity 
in this movie and these women acting like complete and other dumbasses that I just sat there thinking to myself, like, who thought this was funny? What fucking executive sat there and was like, oh, this is really funny, dude. This is not funny, man. This is really cringeworthy and really bad, man. I was just, I mean, I sat through the whole mo movie, but God damn, dude, I wasn't happy about it, dude. I'm not going to lie. This thing is, is a real train wreck of a movie. And it just goes to show you that really when, when comedy is forced, when you're just improvising constantly, that doesn't make a good movie, dude. You have to have something that really people can, can latch onto and just doing random jokes and hoping, like, it's like throwing spaghetti at a wall and hoping something sticks. In this movie, nothing sticks. And I feel so bad for Selma Hayek, because I love Selma Hayek, dude, but she was wasted in this movie, dude. She's really given not much to do other than playing this bitchy character, and she's done that in better movies. I, this, this thing's garbage, dude. Like, like I said, I like Tiffany Haddish and Rose Byrne. More Rose Byrne than Tiffany Haddish. Tiffany Haddish, her comedy, I don't get. I don't like Tiffany Haddish as a comedian. But some of her dramatic stuff, like, I like some of the stuff that she, that she did, like The Kitchen, which I thought was really good. And some of the other comedy she's done haven't been half bad, but when she really goes out of her way to improvise and force stuff, God, it really shows. And this is not a good one, guys. Honestly, really stay away from this one. Unless you like forced and improvised comedy, then maybe give it a chance, but I don't recommend this one whatsoever. Sorry, guys, this one really deserves to be in the trash. Not a good movie, not by a long shot. And then over here, guys, I am seeing they have the Blu-ray DVD digital of The Gentleman for $22.96. The DVD for $17.96 here. Now, I got a chance to watch this one on Amazon Prime. And I was actually a little hesitant to watch this one. Not that... I don't like these type of movies, but because the trailers, to me, really, really didn't look that great. It kind of looked really generic, and I was like, mm, I'm going to pass on this one and wait till now to watch it. And I'm so pissed off that I waited, dude. Honestly, this movie is really cool, man. Basically, it's about Matthew McConaughey's character, who's this big-time drug dealer, has built this whole business and is trying to get out and be legitimate and it's all these people really trying to sort of double cross him and take what he has and all these sort of ruthless characters and it's so awesome dude everybody here does a great job Matthew McConaughey is still king here he's funny here he's menacing he's He's arrogant, he's suave, he does everything great in this movie. Charlie Hunnam is awesome here as well. And I'm not a huge fan of Charlie Hunnam, but I thought he did an excellent job here. And you know who else I'm not really a fan of is, I'm not really a fan of Hugh Grant. I mean, I like Hugh Grant in, in certain movies like Nine Months and a few other ones from the 90s, but... I kind of think he's a pretty arrogant guy overall, and outside of a few roles, haven't really connected with him as an actor, but here, he really plays this sort of reporter slimeball guy who does a, an amazing job, man. I really appreciated him in this role, dude. He, he really brings the movie together. Colin Farrell is really good here as, as, as well with a small role. Henry Golding from Crazy Rich Asians. He does an awesome job here as well, man. He's really, he's, he's trying to play tough and menacing and yet, and yet kind of he's intimidated by these people at the same time. It, it's a, it's kind of a hard line to sort of mix with, but he does a really great job here, man. I like sort of the Cockney style slang. I think this is a really fun movie, dude. I like the action here. I think the comedy really works. And you never know really what's going on until the final frames where you're like, is it this person that's really double-crossing him and is that person? It's a clever movie, dude. And I remember before I watched this, I had a co-worker of mine who was like, 
dude, I, I sat down with my wife and watched The Gentleman, and it was so good, and I really enjoyed myself, and I think you will too. And he was right. I had a ball with The Gentleman. I thought it was great, man. Definitely give this one a look, man. Honestly, I was on the fence about it, and now after watching it, I'm sort of kicking myself in the ass, thinking, why the hell didn't I watch this in the first place? Ah, so good, dude. And I think it's a good mix of comedy and action, and I think after you watch this movie, you're, you're just going to be like, dude, I just want m to spend more time with these slime balls. <laughs> it's weird, dude, but I really did, man. It was fun. I like this one. Not bad, man. And then over here, I'm seeing they have, ooh, Ip Man 4, the 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray for $22.96. The Blu-ray DVD for $14.96 and the DVD for $12.96 right here. Now, I got a chance to watch this one on Amazon Prime. And, you know, it's really interesting because the Ip Man series has always been really fascinating to me. I, I really like the Ip Man series. I think it's a really great showcase for Donnie Yen. I think it's some cool martial arts movies. There's some really good stories to be told here. I like sort of the some of the fish out of water comedy that happens at times with these. And honestly, Ip Man has had some really great foes over the years. Like I think the third one had Mike Tyson in it. And and it's actually been a really good series overall. It's not the best martial arts movies you've ever seen in your life. At least I don't think it is. But I've had a really great time enjoying these films. And I thought, a fourth time going back to the well, how good is it really going to be? But honestly, I was really surprised by this one. Basically, it's Ip Man going to America to sort of find a school and a, a, a place for his son and it's sort of the military who is adopting sort of kung fu karate martial arts and it's these people who don't really like these these foreigners want them out and it's about sort of Ip Man and his people really wanting e equality and sort of the, the clashing between that I thought it was really well done dude I thought the I thought the fight sequences were really great here, really dynamic. I thought the villain here played by Scott At Atkins, who I'm not the biggest fan of Scott Atkins. He's not a bad martial artist, but he's not the best either. I think he played a really great bad guy here. He's really tough and brutal, and, and he's just somebody that's a really good foe. I think Donnie Yen still does a really great job here as well. I, I like them sort of bringing in Bruce Lee and sort of starting up sort of the Bruce Lee story a little bit on, on top of ending Ip, ending Ip Man's. I won't really get too much into sort of the Ip Man tale here and how it ends because this is the final one. There's not going to be any more after the fourth one here. I, I don't want to say where it ends, but it's a really good ending. It's a poignant ending for him. It's a poignant ending for the character. I think it's a really great way for Donnie Yen to call it quits with this character and be respectful of the material at the same time. Is it the best out of all the Ip Man movies? Mm, I don't know, guys. I don't really know if it is the best out of all the Ip Man films. I mean, it's not terrible. I really did enjoy it. I think it's a really good martial arts movie. But I think some of the other Ip Man films may have been a bit better. But... I think on the budget that they had to make this film, it ain't half bad, dude. So I would definitely give this one a chance, dude. It's not bad. If, if Man 4. It really is worth it, man. Especially if you love the Ip Man series. It's pretty good, man. And as you can actually see, guys, there's like the different cover art here with Ip Man, where he's sort of doing his Chinese pose. And then there's one here where he's sort of, he's sort of practicing on this sort of wooden sort of instrument where it's on fire. I actually like this one a little bit more than this cover. This cover is really cool, man. Not bad at all, dude. N not bad. I, I like that cover a lot. Not, not bad, man. Now, of course, they don't have a couple of the other releases this week, but, you know, still, this is actually really good for Walmart because sometimes they don't carry much here at all. So this one is a, definitely a pleasant surprise for sure, man. Not bad. Hmm, four out of five or so releases, not half bad this week. All right.
let's head out. Well, this is quite interesting, guys. But if this is what I got to do to stay safe and, you know, protect myself at the same time, I'll do it. But, uh, you know, I mean, I already do this at work anyways with the with the mask on and everything so it's i'm starting to get used to it but it definitely takes a little bit of time for sure man but uh new world indeed guys that's for sure that being said man actually this walmart i hate to say it it's actually getting better dude i mean we're getting a lot more of the new releases every single week they are missing a couple things, but as I said, baby steps, dude. We're not getting the indie titles yet, but they are getting better stock in every single week, and that really gives me hope that that this Walmart is on the upswing. Some Walmarts are on the downswing. Other ones struggle to get product in, and trust me, we've seen this Walmart struggle a lot in the past, but this one is actually starting to get better. Nice. You know, you just have to wade through a lot of really crappy weeks until you can get to actually some bit of redemption. Who knew it was finally going to happen during the pandemic? Weird, but hey, I'll take it, guys. Not bad releases this week and a lot of stuff for people to choose from. And Walmart here has most of the stuff in stock. Not half bad, guys. Hope you enjoyed it this week. Not really exclusives here, but hopefully we'll see more other places as well. But... Here's the hoping, guys. Not bad here. Hope you enjoyed it. Let's head to the next location and see what we can find. All right, everybody. We are at our second location, Target. And, you know, what's been really fascinating during this pandemic stuff is the fact that how much movies are getting released every single week, dude. I mean, I'm honestly really shocked by it. Because I think this week is like five or six movies that are coming out on physical media in some format or another. Other indie titles that are coming out, you know, stuff that you can only buy online. Like, it keeps on going week after week. And at a certain point, I even thought that we weren't just going to get any stuff coming out. Like, I'm, I mean, I'm not complaining, but, like, I thought to myself, I'm like, okay, at a certain point, the studios are going to say okay, we're not going to be putting out as much, maybe one or two titles and kind of spreading things out a little bit more. That's what I thought was going to happen, but that never happened. And it still isn't happening. And I'm like, okay, I don't know whether they just think everybody has disposable income and people will still buy the titles. Or I thought of something else, which maybe with a lot of these companies is that basically they have a commitment date They've already did all the special features. They've already, you know, upgraded the picture quality and all this other stuff. They've already done all the lab work. They've pressed the discs. They, do they really want to wait on these titles or just put them out there into the market? That's a tough thing to do, man. What's the right thing to do? Is, is the right thing to do to hold back the titles? Or is the right thing to do to just put the stuff out anyways and if people want it, they want it. And when they get the money, hey, they get the money and it's going to be out there. I don't know. I mean, if I was somebody in, in a company position, I might hold back titles. Just because maybe the market doesn't really demand it so much. At the same time, streaming services are still putting out new content so why not put the stuff out on Blu-ray, DVD, and 4K? Like, it's, it's, it's really tough. It's sort of a balance, and you don't really know what the right answer is. I still give a lot of these companies credit for putting the stuff out there, and if people want it, they do. But at a certain point, it's going to run out, man. There's going to be a time when, as I've told you guys before, there's not going to be anything to show in the Out and About videos, because basically right now there's no new movies coming out. And until that starts happening again, you know, you can't have a lot of stuff coming out at the stores because you don't, you're, there's not a healthy turnover of movies in theaters versus movies coming out on Blu-ray and DVD, 4K. So, yeah, it's right now, until that happens, the well's going to dry up soon. 
I don't know how soon, but it's going to dry up at some point, guys. I'm very curious of when that's going to happen or if companies will at one point slow things down a bit. I mean, definitely let me know what you guys think about that. It's, it's something that sort of entered my mind this week. And it's entered my mind for a little bit, but I definitely want to know what you guys think about that. In the meantime, honestly, it's a huge release week, dude. And Walmart had a decent amount of stuff. I think Target will have a good amount because, again, when it's a big release week, Target usually tends to do pretty well, man. So I'm hoping for some good stuff this week. Maybe an exclusive? Well, let's hope. We certainly didn't see it at Walmart, so I'm hoping over at Target. But, uh, well... I gotta put the gloves and the mask back on to head inside. Hopefully it's well worth it. Let's give it a look. All right, everybody, we are in at Target over here and the first thing I'm seeing is they have the 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray and digital of Bad Boys for Life for $29.99. The Blu-ray DVD and digital for $22.99. The DVD digital for $19.99. They also have this three movie collection again that we saw over at Walmart and that is $29.99 over here. And I, I do really like the art on this. You have sort of different scenes from all of the, the Bad Boys movies that are in here. Not bad cover actually. Actually pretty cool dude. Hmm. But I, I would still wait, wait on, on this one though. But if you're a fan of the Bad Boys movies and haven't picked up any of them, that's not a bad one. What they also have over here, they have the Blu-ray DVD and digital with a Target exclusive here for $24.99. And this actually includes exclusive movie poster art right here. Nice. And look at that. That's a pretty cool kind of has like almost like, God, if I had to say what it looks like, almost like like a Miami Vice sort of like poster vibe it kind of does man very interesting dude hmm Blu-ray DVD digital of bad boys for life very in interesting art man I don't know I kind of like if I had to say one I kind of like this art right here this is the the different target art but you have this art right here that's a little bit more colorful and then you have this art right here that's that's a little less colorful I kind of like the more vibrant colorful art though this one's not and not bad though man hmm now when i was watching this movie i i, I kind of felt that something was really missing when i was watching it and I, I couldn't quite place my finger on it until i really thought about it more and more and it and it's michael bay dude michael bay is what's missing from this movie because, you know, when I watched the first Bad Boys movie and Bad Boys 2, like, the action and everything is so crazy and wild and insane. And it's just, like, wall-to-wall -wall craziness of, like, an action extravaganza with, like, these really wild characters. And that's Michael Bay in a nutshell, man. That's who he is, dude. And... He, the, the third movie tries to sort of, tries to still make it a bad boys movie, and yet, and yet doesn't quite pull it off, because Michael Bay is what's missing from this movie, dude. I, I remember in Bad Boys 2 when they had that insane sort of car chase at the end of that movie. When, when they were plowing through, like, homes and buildings and everything. And I was thinking, like, this is, this is the craziest stuff. This is insane, dude. And, and I was like, that's just what Michael Bay gives you. Michael Bay is one of those directors that is just batshit crazy and insane, but in a good way. And his movies are sort of the most action clusterfucks you've ever seen in your life. And... And I kind of feel that's what's missing from Bad Boys for Life. I mean, the action is okay here, but it's not as dynamic as it would be if it was a Michael Bay movie. Now, mind you, I don't love all Michael Bay movies. I mean, that's for sure. I'm not a huge fan of everything Michael Bay's done. But for some reason, I felt like the Bad Boys franchise really fit his his sort of action shoot 'em up sensibilities. I really did, man. And when he didn't come back, I felt like that was a really... 
a really bad thing that he didn't come back, dude. Because uh, not to hate on the directors who did this movie, because they did a good job, but God, they they're just not Michael Bay, man. Now I heard a rumor that Michael Bay may come back for the fourth movie, but that's not exactly guaranteed. But it's kind of funny with this movie. There's kind of this whole thing of like one last ride. We're doing one last ride this time, you know, bad boys for life. And I'm thinking like, dude, it's never just the last ride. You know, if you've learned anything from like the Fast and the Furious franchise, dude, that shit continues like ad nauseum, man. And this movie made a lot of money at the box office. So there is going to be a fourth film. I guarantee you that. So the last ride is only the last ride until the next last ride. You know what I'm saying, man? Like never take their word of it be ever being the last ride. But, other than that, it's not a bad movie, though. De definitely very in interesting, especially if you're a Bad Boys fan. But, don't go in thinking it's going to be the best of the franchise, because I definitely think it's the weakest, though, man. You do get here extended and alternate scenes, outtakes and bloopers, ride or die making of, uh, partners in crime behind the scenes series, it's about time, to, well, yeah, no shit. Uh... Easter eggs and more. Hmm, interesting. Not not bad here. You know, it is good though to see Martin Lawrence back on the big screen and seeing him doing some more work again. But I kind of feel like Martin Lawrence has passed his prime. Like I really do, man. And it's not to hate on Martin Lawrence because I quite like him. But when I'm watching this movie, dude's out of shape. Bro, dude is majorly out of shape in a big bad way, man. I mean, he he needs to get on like on some sort of treadmill or fucking ab machine or something. Jesus, dude. I mean, the and the last big theatrical movie that he was in where he had a starring role was I think Big Mama's House 3. It had been a while since he had done anything, man. Like I said, it's still nice to see him in here. And his comedy chops are good, but they're not as good as they used to be. Uh, he's kind of lost it a little bit. I, you know, I'll still give Will Smith a lot of credit because he's really good still. And he's still got it to some degree. But Martin Lawrence, man, dude. Dude, man, get on like, you know, Slim Fast or some of that shit, dude, man. You need it, bro. Just saying. Damn, man. I still love you, but shit. You ain't lie like you were from Bad Boys and Bad Boys 2. That's for goddamn sure. Hmm. Definitely check this this one out, guys. But again, going with checked expectations, man. But not bad exclusive here for Bad Boys for Life. Not bad at all, man. Hmm. Then over here I'm seeing they have the Blu-ray DVD digital of Like a Boss for 1999. The DVD for 17.99 over here. Now, okay, so I kind of want to talk a little bit more about the whole improvisation of comedy thing because it didn't really work out so well in this movie. Now, I don't hate improvisational comedy. I don't hate it. Like, some of my favorite movies have comedy that's improvised. Ghostbusters, Cat Caddyshack, uh, you know, um, Animal House. I mean, a ton of them do. So it's not like I absolutely hate improvised comedy, but you got to be really good at that shit in order to really pull it off. Like, you look at somebody like Bill Murray. Bill Murray's really good at it because he's... I, I don't know whether he's honed his craft over the years, but I think it's it's sort of his his ability to sort of sort of turn on a dime kind of like kind of like the skills he gained when doing SNL people like Tiffany Haddish and Rose Byrne they can't really do that they're not really good at improvising and making it funny and playing off of somebody you know what I mean where other actors are much better at it and it's really interesting because you know one of my favorite college comedies of all time PCU I own the DVD of that and it's very fascinating because there's two audio commentaries on that disc. If you ever get a chance to pick that up, definitely listen to those two audio commentaries. One is by Jeremy Pivot. 
And Jeremy Piven is talking about how he loves making the movie and how he really enjoys, you know, the people that were involved in it and how people still come up to him talking about it. And he's very nice about it. But there's another part in the commentary where he talks about how how he felt like he wasn't given enough chances to, to improvise. That he, he, he went to the director and he talked to the director and he said, Hey, you know, how about we improvise this scene here? How about we improvise that? Or how about we do this? And the director was like, no, we're not going to do it. And he felt really gypped, like he could really do it. And he wasn't really given the opportunity outside of one scene. And... And he sort of is still a little pissed about that. And then you do the flip side of it with the other commentary, which is Hart Bachner. And he's the director of the movie. And he does a commentary and he talks about how much he loved making the movie and the actors and everything like that. But he also talks about how, well, the actors wanted to improvise. And they wanted to, you know, sort of go outside of the box and just improvise this scene and that scene and whatever scene. And he said no. He said, the script is funny. If the script is funny and we're all laughing and it's all good, why are we trying to force it and change it? And I thought that was really fascinating of two different sort of perspectives. One from the actor perspective, which is more of like, hey, why aren't we improvising and being more creative? On the flip side of it, the director being like, look, it's already funny we've all agreed on this why are we trying to change it i thought that was really fascinating man i i really did and so i don't know where you guys are to go on it i feel like if your if your script is already funny and you can already make a good movie out of the script then why try to change it or force it to fit somebody else they they should already be going with the material on the same time if you have a talent why not maybe give them an opportunity it's really, it's really tough, dude. I, I, I don't know what the right side is or the wrong side is. I just know that people like Tiffany Haddish don't pull it off re really well. And some of the best ones that do, I think they have the training from the old Saturday Night Live stuff where they're, they're really quick about it. Here, it's, none of it really stuck, dude, uh, unfortunately. And it was really unfunny and just a pain in the butt, dude. Tiffany Haddish and Rose Byrne are knocked down hilarious. I don't know what movie this person saw, but it definitely wasn't the one I was watching. That's for damn sure. Definitely let me know what you think of this one, guys. Uh, you do get uh, deleted scenes. Get some with Ron and Greg. Coworkers like these who needs friends. Not a lot of special features, but I didn't think this one was going to have a lot of special features on it, guys. This... Unfortunately, this movie is just a really lame attempt at comedy, and there's so many better ones out there, dude. Give it a look if you like the actors, but forewarning you, it ain't that funny, man. It ain't that funny at all. Then, over here, guys, I'm seeing they have the Blu-ray DVD digital of The Turning for $22.99. Now, oh, wow, let's talk about this one. I got a chance to watch this on Amazon Prime. Now, I was not going to watch this one in the theaters because I had heard so many bad things about this movie, dude. Like, this movie, I think, like, got, like, a cinema score of, like, an F or something. Like, it was really hated. People, people really disliked this thing in a big, bad way, dude. And so I was like, you know what, I'm going to wait a while to watch this. The the movie is basically about this nanny who is is now hired to take care of these two orphans and she's starting to realize that that the house and the kids are disturbed and it's holding secrets and she's got to kind of figure out what's going on and try to survive the madness the movie is based off of, I believe, the book The Turning of the Screw, if I'm not mistaken. It's more of like a modern-day take on it. But, wow. Man, I want to be nice to this movie, but 
I'm not gonna be. I, I'm gonna be real with you guys. This this movie is not that good, dude. It's really not, man. The acting here is really piss poor from everybody, and I'm really shocked by that because Mackenzie Davis is a really good actress, and Finn Wolfhard is not bad either. But their acting and their characters come off as really bland and lifeless. The scares here are really weak. Like, the scares here, it's like that typical jump scare, sort of, like, loud noise stuff that is complete and utter bullshit. And the movie is just boring. Like, these characters are, are such a chore to, to watch. And the plot, at some point, you're like, can we just speed this shit up by now? I really didn't like this thing, dude. It, it was... It was a real slog to get through, man. I wish I could say that this movie was really good and it's sort of one of those underrated horror films that you guys should definitely check out, but no. And I'm also going to say something else here, that the ending makes absolutely no goddamn sense. Is she possessed now? Is this all in her head? Was it this demonic entity or this ghost the entire time or was it just her? Like, it answers no fucking questions. And there's a lot of horror movies out there that don't need to answer things. Like, I don't mind a horror film having a little mystery to it, but this one made no goddamn sense. I mean, the whole plot is just really confusing, and the ending just makes you so pissed off, because you're like, there, there's, it, there's nothing that makes sense here. It's just an absolute garbled mess. Of, of crap and it's it's just a really lame horror film that unfortunately I think will just leave you scratching your head and will leave you more pissed off than you went into it yeah this is a this is a hard pass dude this really is man I mean like I said I like Finn Wolfhard I like Mackenzie Davis you know, movies like this, I was thinking of ones that I would re I would consider sort of ones that have sort of a similar idea, and it may be something like The Others, or stuff like that, that would probably be close to this, but The Others is so good, I, I really don't want to even lump that into this movie, because this movie is one of those really forgettable films. Like, it's not even like, hey, watch it in a, on a rainy day type of thing, it's more of like, if you can find this for free or for a dollar, then maybe watch it, but it's not one you're going to want to keep in the collection, dude. I just was confused the whole time, and I was really bored, and I was checking my phone, I was doing other things, and then really paying attention to the movie, because at a certain point, I just tuned out, because I just didn't like it, dude. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of really great horror films I can recommend you, but this ain't one of them, guys, I'm sorry, I really am, man. It includes the alternate ending, and God, I hope the alternate ending is so much better than the ending we got, because that ending is pure bullshit. It really deserved to get an F cinema score. It's just dull and lifeless and boring, and yeah, I, I can't recommend it to you guys. Uh, you also get deleted scenes and behind the turning. Yeah, it's kind of a shame, because the early part of 2020 has seen, like, the Grudge Remake and The Turning, two really not that great horror films. And for horror movie lovers, we're like, uh, can 2020 get better with horror? Because this ain't cutting it, dude. Yeah, stay far away from this one, guys. Mm. Then over here I'm seeing they have the Blu-ray, DVD, and digital of The Gentleman for $22.99. Now, I got to give some props to Guy Ritchie. I really do, man. Guy Ritchie is a really great director that I don't really know if he gets a lot of love sometimes, man. I really don't. I, and this type of movie that The Gentleman is, it's been a long time coming for Guy Ritchie because I remember back in the day movies like Snatch and Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels. Uh, rock, rock and Rolla, which is really good as well. Those are really in his wheelhouse of like a Cockney British slang. These these sort of 
scumbag type of characters and sort of the the seedy underbelly of the world and and you sort of reveling in their crazy ridiculous madness this really reminds me of those ones and it's a really great return to form for him dude i mean i've always liked guy Ritchie, but at a certain point he sort of did go off the rails a bit i mean he did he did that madonna movie swept away which really isn't good I happen to really like the Sherlock Holmes movies, but I know they're not for everybody. He he also did that newer take on King Arthur, which I, wow, that one I really didn't like, dude. I thought that was a really terrible movie. He tried to do a movie like Snatch or something and put it in the King Arthur world, and it just didn't work, dude. I mean, I did like Aladdin, and I thought that was a really pleasant surprise from him, but seeing him go back to these sort of scumbag-style characters and sort of the British slang and, and sort of the British humor, I think really worked a lot better for him this time around than, than some of the other films that he's done as of recent, man. It's a pure return to form for him. I really loved it, and I think everybody does a phenomenal job here. I wasn't prepared to like this one, but, you know, it just goes to show you that you really do have to give things a chance, and certain directors like Guy Ritchie, even though they sort of fall off the rails at times, Honestly, they can pick themselves back up, and The Gentleman is one of those ones that's a really great surprise, dude. And as a big fan of Matthew McConaughey, that dude does not disappoint at all, dude. Very nice. Uh, you do get here... Best Gentlemanly Quips, Glossary of Cannabis, Behind the Scenes of Gentlemen and Photo Gallery. Not bad special features, not bad special features at all, man. And if you're a fan of weed, then this movie is right up up your alley man so much goddamn weed in this movie i think it would have cheech and chong being envious that's for damn sure wow very good movie man definitely give it a look he big big surprise but very wonderful man i'm also seeing over here they have infinity train book one on dvd for 9.99 first time on dvd it's from cartoon network I have never heard of this one, Infinity Train. This is your ticket for a mind-bending journey, so climb aboard. Uh, hmm. Interesting. No, I've never heard of this. I really don't watch... I really don't watch Cartoon Network. I mean, I used to watch Cartoon Network a long, long time ago, man. Long time back. But it's been so long, dude. I know they have... I know they have a lot of really great programming... But I've never really gotten into a lot of the Cartoon Network stuff in a long time, dude. I mean, of course, I don't have cable anymore, so so a lot of that stuff just passes me by. But, hmm, if you guys know anything about Infinity Train, definitely let me know. Hmm, doesn't look half bad. And then over here, guys, I'm seeing they have the Blu-ray digital of The Last Measure for $19.99. The ultimate sacrifice deserves the highest honor. Inspired by the incredible true story. Now, I got a chance to watch this on Amazon Prime. And I was really intrigued by wanting to watch this because it's based on this battle in the Vietnam War. And how this one really very courageous soldier ended up saving so many of these people and i've always been fascinated by the vietnam war i've been fascinated by the effects of it on the soldiers on the stories that revolved around the vietnam war there's a lot of really great vietnam war movies that i really really love things like born on the fourth of july that that is really fan fantastic stuff like that that i've really enjoyed man and so i was really curious about this one and basically it's about this guy, this, this um, sort of political career guy who is looking into this request that a older soldier has of basically how this one guy got this medal, but he should have gotten the Medal of Honor and that his medal should be upgraded and he kind of looks into that and sort of the secrets that he finds and the courageous tales from these uh, these soldiers and how it really affects him 
It's a really fascinating movie, dude. I really love this one quite a bit, and I don't think it's one people really know about. I really don't, man. I mean, for, first of all, I think the acting here is phenomenal, man. I mean, Sebastian Stan, Christopher Plummer, William Hurd, Ed Harris, Samuel L. L. Jackson, and so many others, uh, Bradley Whitford. So many great acting performances here, man, and they're all at the top of their game. They all do an amazing job here. I think the war sequences are really well done, really well handled. I, I think the drama here, I think they really do a really great job to really honor and respect the real life heroes that ended up being a part of this ba this battle and this war. I think this is a really well done, well made movie. And if you're really into sort of Vietnam War war type of dramas one that really honors sort of the the unknown tales that really should be highlighted then definitely give the last full measure a look man it, it really is pretty damn good dude i mean the acting alone is phenomenal by by all of these people the story is incredibly fascinating and it's good to see these these stories being highlighted because there's so many really great true stories from all of these wars that never really got the time of day that they deserve. And I think it's good to finally see that happen, dude. So I really like the this movie quite a bit, man. This is a big recommendation for me. I'm not the biggest fan always of sort of these two plus hour dramas, but with the acting and the story, it really got to me, man. I really love this one quite a bit, dude. You do get here the women of the last measure medal of honor ceremony shoot the music of the last measure remembering operation abilene william pitzenbarger tribute gallery and more really great dude again this is a phenomenal mo movie it's part war movie part sort of political drama but it's very well told dude and if you're into these type of movies i do highly re recommend this one by far man then over here I'm all seeing they do have the Blu-ray DVD of Ip Man 4, the finale for $16.99 right here. And I I gotta talk about Donnie Yen, dude, because Donnie Yen, you know. See, I haven't watched everything Donnie Yen has done, dude. I really honestly haven't, but I remember the first thing I ever saw Donnie Yen in was Blade 2. And it's so weird to say I saw him in Blade 2 the first thing. But I remember seeing him in Blade 2 and I'm like, cool, that's a really cool sort of martial arts Chinese guy, man. And I was kind of like, huh, what else has he done, dude? And I sort of wanted to sort of see what else the guy did and, and what else he, he was a part of. And I stumbled on things like the Ip Man series, and I and I stumbled on other really great stuff he's done overseas. Donnie Yen is a really great martial artist, dude. Everybody talks about Jackie Chan and Jet Li and and some of those ones. And Donnie Yen, I don't know if Donnie Yen has ever really gotten the same kind of love that those other martial artists have. I don't really know if he has, dude. I mean, maybe in this sort of inner circles of fans who love these type of movies, but not really worldwide. I know he's gotten more n notice in sort of the more high profile movies he's done, like like when he was in in Rogue One and did a great job in Rogue One. He was awesome there. I think Blade 2 got him some notice as well. And there's other ones, but I think the Ip Man series has been the series that I really think has highlighted and showcased his abilities in a really fantastic way, dude. And I think when all is said and done is in his career, I think Ip Man, this whole quadrilogy now, really will, this will be his thing that he's remembered for the most. I really do believe that, man. I, I really do. I mean, I know there's more in the Ip Man series. I know there's a prequel TV show, if I'm not mistaken, and some other stuff. Because one of my friends at work was commenting, he was like, wait a minute, isn't there more than four movies? And I'm like, no, there's four movies, and then there's, like, other Ip Man stuff, pre prequel things and everything like that from what I, I remember. But, but yeah, it's a really phenomenal movie and really good movie for martial arts fans. You know, honestly, it's, 
see the the problem here at least for me is that I'm not the biggest fan of martial arts movies I'm not saying that they're bad I really do enjoy them quite a bit uh, you see how I got into stuff I got into stuff through my father who really loved movies like Bloodsport and the early Jackie Chan films and I sort of took his lead but he was more of a fan of that stuff than uh, than I was I still watch it on occasion but I do have to admit, some of my favorites are the Ip Man series, and I think they did a really great job here with the whole series. And I think the finale really did honor Donnie Yen and the character in a really great way, dude. Uh, you get some bonus featurettes and some trailers. That's about all you get here, but a fittingly spectacular finish saga. I think it is, actually. It's not bad, man. And good fight scenes, actually. And the action director was Yen Wo Ping, and I think he was actually the stunt coordinator for the Matrix movies, if I'm not mistaken. Hmm, interesting. I think he was, man. But honestly, though, this is a really great f finale, and if you've never watched any of the Ip Man movies, definitely do it, especially if you're a fan of Donnie Yen. The guy is a really good martial artist, man, and definitely deserves more love, for sure. Not bad, man. And not bad this week, dude. A lot of titles came out. Like I said, about six big re releases came out this week, man. A lot of stuff to get, get into this week. And if you're a lover of movies, a lot of different genres to choose from. Not bad. All right, let's head out. Not so bad this week, guys. Not bad at all here over at Target. Man, they have all the new releases on top of a couple movies that we didn't see over at that Walmart. On top of that, we also have that Bad Boys for Life exclusive. Now, I didn't really know whether we were going to really get any major exclusives this week. I, I was hoping for it because Bad Boys for Life is a big movie. And since Best Buy is closed, at least only curbside pickup, then we're not going to see if they have a steelbook or not. So I was like, well, hopefully we'll see something. And at least Target came through with that really cool sort of slipcover art. Like I said, it almost looks like something out of Miami Vice or something. Kind of, not, not bad, actually. One of the Target employees was actually talking to me and he was like, I kind of want that. And I was like, big fan of Miami Vice, are you? <laughs> Not half bad this week. Not half bad. And like I said, when there's a big release week and a lot of movies are coming out, Target definitely benefits from it in a big, bad way. And they definitely did this time, man. Not half bad for selection and variety this time. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let's head to the next location. See what they got. All right, everybody. We are at our third and final location. Oh, it's not Best Buy, unfortunately. It's uh, going over to Walmart, a second Walmart. We're going to check out uh, some of the indie goodies that may or may not have come out this week. But before we do that, I definitely wanted to talk about a movie trailer with you guys. And I think it's actually worth talking about. And that is Capone. Another Al Capone story. Yes, there is many of them. And add one more to the list, guys. Now... I had heard that this movie was coming, I had heard that they were making it, but outside of that I really didn't know much else until the trailer dropped. And it's really interesting, basically from what I gather in the trailer, it's basically about Al Capone's later life, having dementia, reliving the past, uh, these sort of enemies that are coming after him and the paranoia that he has. The trailer looks good. and. And I am interested in checking the movie out for a couple reasons. One, I am a fan of Tom Hardy. I think Tom Hardy is amazing of an actor. I think he's really great at what he does. And him embodying Al Capone is really exciting to me. Like, I remember when I watched him when he did the film Bronson. And I always thought, like, God, if you can take his performance as Bronson and put it into something like an Al Capone, that would be tremendous. And so I'm kind of hoping that this goes that way. But it's interesting that he's playing sort of Capone in sort of his later years. Maybe we'll get some very interesting nuanced performances, but also crazy Tom Hardy as well. I'm very curious to see where this goes with his performance. On top of that, look, the movie's directed by Josh Trank. And Josh Trank, let's be honest, man, that guy is in movie jail. Okay, he really is in movie jail, dude. After the Fantastic Four, 
God, after that major screw-up, I mean, he basically is almost blacklisted in Hollywood, dude. So this movie is almost like his final hope, really, in kind of making an impression. And if he doesn't do that, then he's really screwed. But it's interesting because this movie's not coming to theaters. It was originally supposed to do that, and because of the whole coronavirus, COVID-19 thing, it's actually going to be coming directly to streaming. Now, I don't know exactly the details yet of when it's coming on streaming and how you can pay for it and everything. I don't really know that yet. But it's interesting, and this is a trend that's really happening now. Like, you're seeing a lot of these smaller movie there's, or these indie films that would have maybe gotten a small rollout in theaters in New York and LA and slowly build up and now they're just heading to streaming. I'm curious if that's going to limit the audience that sees it or it's going to widen it more because you can watch it at home. I'm very curious where that's going to go, man. I mean, it looks cool. There's a ton of Al Capone stories out there. It's interesting to me because of Tom Hardy. And I will say this much. As much as I'm looking forward to Tom Hardy in this movie and in another interesting take on Al Capone, I will say the one thing that kind of turns me off a little bit when I'm watching the trailer is the makeup. The makeup on Tom Hardy, for some reason, doesn't really look that good to me. It sort of looks like it's kind of half-assed a little bit. And I'm hoping it's just from what we've seen in the trailer and it's not... It's, it's not like it's going to be the whole film. I'm hoping... But again, that would be sort of a minor complaint at best. I'm interested to see if this can be a Josh Trank sort of revival. I'm curious to see where Tom Hardy's going to go with this role. It, it was originally actually supposed to be called Fonzo, if I'm not mistaken. And the studio, I think, changed the, the name, I think, to appeal to more people. Uh, so uh, changes have already happened to this movie, whether or not, uh, you know, it was in Josh Trank's control or not, but that's already happened. Anyways, I mean, it looks good to me. I'm interested in, in, in the, the movie. Shame it's not coming to theaters, but cool that you can still check it out at, at home, man. Not half bad. So I am looking forward to it. Let me know what you guys think of that. In the meantime, let's head into the second Walmart and see what uh, indie goodies we could find. All right, everybody, we are at the second Walmart, and the first thing I'm seeing over here is they have the DVD of Looking for Alaska. Hmm. For 1996. Hmm. From the author of The Fault in Our Stars. I like the cover. Doesn't look that bad. Wonder what this is. Based on John Green's award winning first novel. And this series about friendship, love, and loss. Falls in love. Tragedy. Huh. Actually, it kind of looks interesting, man. Hmm. Kind of looks really interesting. Kind of the interesting sort of coming of age tale. Not bad. Huh. Interesting. It's written by. It's written by the guy who wrote for The O.C. and Gossip Girl. Now, I haven't really watched Gossip Girl, and I haven't really watched The O.C. either. I mean, well, actually, I've watched a couple episodes of The O.C. back in the day, but... I mean, he seems like he knows what he's doing. Oh, doesn't look that bad, man. Hmm. I do like a good coming-of-age tale. If you guys know anything about looking for Alaska, let me know. Hmm. They have that. They also have... Oh, what's this? Blu-ray DVD combo pack of Everfall. What would you sacrifice? Not bad cover, actually. Look at that cover. It's pretty cool. Hmm. A year after an unfortunate accident, Eva has disappointing tryout at a big figure skating competition. Her coach invites her to in a mysterious competition. Like her boyfriend, an extreme sports YouTube star, of course. Forcing them to face things more terrible. Really? So it kind of starts off as sort of a... A movie... That's like about redemption. And getting a second chance and turns into like a horror tale? That's really interesting, man. I don't... 
I don't know about this one. Like, it starts off as a sort of melodrama type of thing, but then it goes into full-on, like, horror territory. Hmm. It, it sounds kind of interesting, actually. Not really the melodrama part, more about the horror part, but it kind of looks fascinating to me. I've never heard of this one. If you guys have heard of Everfall, let me know. Hmm. Then they also have... Ooh, they have the DVD of their Redeemed right here. Look at that. Nice cover. I like that with the gun and the cross right there. Nice. Murder, family, faith, forgiveness. Joe Estevez and Matt McCoy. God, it's been so long since I've seen Joe Estevez in anything. God. Matt McCoy, man. Matt McCoy, man. I remember back in the day from, like like the later police academy movies like the one the one where the police academy was in miami like that like that one that one i, rem I remember the most my boss whitey's brother turned from exile and i couldn't pay back his 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 loan can he just like take out another loan at like you know like bank of america or some shit A priest with a gun. Yeah, nice. I'm all holier than thou. Until I don't need to be anymore. And then... I bring... I bring the bad guys to God. Yeah, look at that. Revenge, redemption... And a little gun-gun action at the same time. Not half bad. Huh. The redeemed... I love Matt M McCoy, man. I, I really do. He's, he's an underrated actor, dude. He hasn't done a lot of big high-profile stuff, but I like him. Joe Estevez, dude. He's done some interesting stuff in the past, man. And he's actually um, Emilio Estevez and I believe Charlie Sheen's brother. If, um, a, a brother, father, I should say. Huh. Not bad, actually. It looks pretty cool. Hmm. If you guys know anything about The Redeemed, let, let, let me know. I'm also seeing over here they have the DVD of Kayla. Okay. She never gives up. Looks like she's on a world round trip with her with her cute dog. Oh, how cute. Interesting. Wait a minute. Joe Estevez? Wait a minute, this, this is the second straight-to-DVD movie Joe Estevez is in this week. Man, that motherfucker gets around. Seven-year-old Kayla has been having a hard time connecting with the Chinese side of her heritage. Oh, God. Her father dies. Gee, so this is kind of like an inspirational story, and and I thought it was going to be like a fun movie of like her learning her Chinese heritage and you know maybe winning a singing competition. But God, it got dark, man. Either father friggin' dies, and I like the I like the cover with like the planes and the Eiffel Tower and everything like that. But a boy, man, does it does it not even like remotely like once you look at the back like the like the father dies on a mission for the united states i'm like what the fuck man that that, that i don't get that from the cover shit I, it was supposed to be this heartwarming story maybe it still is looks interesting but oh boy that one threw me for a loop shit then i'm also seeing over here they have the dvd of human capital Oh, look at those actors, man. Leo Schreiber, Marissa Tomei, Peter Sarsgaard. That is a nice cast, dude. From the producer of The Born Identity, Every Lie Has a Price. Hmm. What's this about? The lives of two families collide when their children begin a relationship that leads to a tragic accident. The blame group and greed usually must confront their lives. Maya Hawk. Oh, Maya Hawk from, from Stranger Things in here is in here as well. Huh. 
Alex Wolf also. Hmm. Nice cast, dude. The cast is really good here. Nice. Actually, it looks pretty good, dude. Not gonna lie. With such a really great cast in here, you would think that, like, this, this movie would get more notice, but unfortunately it doesn't, man. It's a real shame, man. Hmm. He's to a tragic accident riddled with blame, grief, and greed. I love actually looks pretty decent. Not 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 gonna lie. Human capital. Not half bad. God. Now of course they probably had more indie titles to show off this week, but unfortunately they didn't really fill them, which is weird because usually this Walmart has all this stuff filled already, but all of it's empty. Maybe we'll see some of this stuff ne next week, but uh, for the moment, unfortunately, empty shelves. But mm, a few titles to check out. Not half bad, guys. All right, well, let's head out of here. Yeah, not a lot to check out this week, unfortunately, here at this Walmart. Guys, I wish we would have seen a little bit more. And I think we honestly would have uh, some of those empty shelving areas where I think we would have seen a little bit more indie titles, just a little bit more would have been nice i mean it's not a huge week for indie releases compared to the more bigger name titles but it seemed like we would have seen a tiny bit more but still not a bad selection here and overall though this walmart regardless man has some really amazing selection and variety i mean just look in back of me guys and Oh yeah, a lot of really, really great selection and variety at this Walmart. So, okay, they don't strike gold 100% of the time, but not everybody does, guys, by far. But still, a lot of really great stuff to ch check out this week. Some interesting indie stuff o overall, and quite a few big name releases. Not half bad, guys, not half bad at all. Hope you enjoyed it. Let's head home and finish the video. All right, everybody, that'll do it for the Blu-ray and DVD out and about video this week and wow man this week was a real challenge it honestly was a real real challenge man with having the mask on with the gloves and still trying to do my same old sort of physical media goodness entertainment style videos that I do for you guys every single week. It wasn't easy, man. It wasn't easy at all. But at the same time, I understand that in order for me to still want to do these videos, and trust me, I still want to go to these stores and still want to do this stuff for you every single week showing off the media, I have to take certain amount of precautions, not only for myself, but for others out there and try to stay safe. And that's what I'm going to do. I mean, whether or not you think that, you know, I have been behind the curve and I should have done this a few weeks ago, at that point, it is what it is, man. I, you know, I can't go back in the past. I can't change that. But I can do what I can do now, and hopefully that counts for something. And so, I mean, I heard a lot of you guys loud and clear over the past few weeks and yes I'm a pretty stubborn guy but eventually I get with the program and I finally have so it's it's going to be it is going to be a challenge doing these videos with the mask on and, and still trying to talk to you guys the best I can and there is going to be some issues from time to time but this is just going to be the new normal for the time being until we get back to some sort of sanity and normalcy Hopefully that's sometime soon and we can get back to our regularly scheduled programs. But until that happens, uh, this is just going to be the way it is, guys. So it's a little bit of adjustment for me. It's a little bit of an adjustment for you as well. But uh, we'll see how it goes, man. That's what I love about these out and about adventures. You never really know what's going to happen from week to week. And uh, this pretty much is the definition of it for sure, guys. But... Regardless of that, there was so much really great physical media that came out this week. There were like six or seven big name titles that came out, man. I mean, it's literally 
a smorgasbord of, of variety, horror, drama, action. Uh, yeah, there's there's so much stuff that came out this week, man. And really, there's something for every movie lover out there, practically. So, hope you guys picked up something good this week. If you did, definitely let me know. As far as I'm concerned, well, I got only one package this week, man. And that is a package from Diabolic DVD. And this Blu-ray is actually one from MVD. And it's one I've never seen before. It's this horror thriller movie that... I'm kind of surprised I've never heard of this because with such a big name actor, you would think that I would have heard about this at some point. But that just goes to show you that even with big name actors, sometimes you don't know everything in their filmography. And this is definitely one of those. It seems really interesting, really cool of a premise and an idea with such interesting actors attached to the project. I'm kind of curious why it sort of fell down the rabbit hole that it did, but... It's one that I was definitely interested in when it got announced, so I'm giving it a chance, man. So, yeah, I picked up this, and that's actually all I really got this week. I know, it's kind of a boring week sometimes for me. Usually I get, like, three, four packages, but uh, not this week, guys. But regardless, you guys will not get to find out exactly what I picked up until my Blu-ray pickle video for April, which will drop next month. It'll show off all the titles that I got for the month of April. And, you know, this this time around there's really a lot of great titles that i'm getting man uh collector's editions limited editions retro titles 80s 90s uh, a lot of great releases from a lot of these sort of in indie companies like scream factory and mvd and perhaps others as well well it's a little bit of a hint, maybe, but there is a lot of great, cool releases coming. You guys know, every single time I do a pickup video, I always get grab some really unique titles and some really unique editions. And every single month has a lot of interesting variety, and April will be no different, guys. So definitely tune into that next month, guys. And... As far as the videos that are coming, well, I did post my February pickup video finally. Yes, I finally got around to it. I had so many wonderful titles to talk about. It's a long video, but boy, do I dive into some really great physical media goodness. Definitely give that one a look. Also, this upcoming weekend, we are going to put out our movie review for The Hunt. Uh, we're finally going to be putting that one out. It's, it's a really great review. We dive into the movie and the specifics and the horror and Blumhouse. And it's a really great review. Definitely give that one a look. And there is other videos that I'm working on as well within the coming weeks. Plus more pickup videos as well. So uh, trust me, there will be more content on the ch channel. I'm not running out of content anytime soon. There will be some stuff coming, guys. So keep a lookout on the channel for that stuff. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. Check out the other Blu-ray and DVD Tuesday videos I've done. The Blu-ray pickup videos, the movie reviews with my friends, the movie hunting, movie talk videos, and much more. If you love movies and physical media, hit subscribe and become part of the Film Fan Nation. I want to thank you guys so much for your love and support that you've given me. Uh, you know, commenting and suggesting stuff to me, uh, liking the videos, it's, it really is an honor to have each of you as subscribers. It really honestly is. You know, sometimes I think to myself, have I done enough to really earn your respect and your trust in me? And I hope I have. I know that I look forward to releasing videos all the time and getting your guys' feedback and your wonderful comments and that alone to me just makes my days. It really does. The fact that I get new comments and I get to interact with you guys is, is a true pleasure. So thank you so much, guys. You give the love to me and I hope I give the love right back to you. So thank you so much, guys. And before I let you guys go, I want to talk about one quick thing, okay? One quick sort of thought I had. And, you know, with all this sort of pandemic stuff going on, and everybody really diving into movies and media and and giving things a chance that they've never given a chance to before. I've seen a lot of articles on Disney Plus. 
and specifically about Splash. Wow, have I heard a lot of stuff about Splash, man. I hadn't heard about Splash in a long time, but now that it's on Disney+, Plus. But it's more controversy than anything else. You see, in the movie, there's a shot in the movie where Daryl Hannah, who plays the mermaid lady, is walking away from Tom Hanks, and you see her bare ass, right? And now that it's on Disney+, Plus, well, Disney+, Plus is very family-friendly. So you don't show bare asses on Disney+. Plus. That's, that's a no-no. And so they decided that they are going to do something about that. So they had CGI artists extend her hair in the back so that it would cover her bare ass. Now, did they do a great job at it? No, not particularly. But it goes to a bigger, I guess, sort of dilemma, which is do these companies have the right to change content if they choose and just and just alter a movie at their own whim. It's an argument that's been going on for years, guys. It really honestly has, man. And who's right, who's wrong? Well, if Disney owns the movie, if they own the title, then I guess they have every right to change it the way they see fit. On the other hand, you talk about how filmmakers' intention, and maybe Ron Howard would not have put that in if he didn't want to put it in. And why should we stifle somebody's creativity out of one simple bare-ass shot because you think it's going to upset the kiddies out there? It's, it's a real struggle, I find, with all of this, guys. I, I really honestly do. I mean, you look back at somebody like George Lucas, that when he owned the, those Star Wars movies, he decided that he could alter them any damn way he wanted to. And we were either going to accept it or we weren't, but he was still going to do it. I think it goes down to filmmakers' intentions. I think it goes down to the rights of these of these studios and what they own and what they choose to. I mean, I've even seen people, uh, you know, post little videos about Lilo and Stitch and how Lilo and Stitch has even had, like, tiny little alterations as well. It's, it's a real interesting artistic dilemma. And it's hard to know where the right and wrong stance is here. What I will say is that that's why I love physical media. Because they are not altering shit on physical media, guys. When you buy that disc, you own it. That's yours. No one, Nobody is going to come to your doorstep and, and change the way the movie is because, because they think someone else is going to get offended. That's why... I love preserving physical media. That's why I love preserving movies on physical media because because there's something genuine about it. When you're on a streaming service, and I've told you guys so many times, streaming services, they will do anything and everything they can to to make a movie how they see their audiences wanting it whether it's taking out a musical sequence or covering a chick's bare ass or altering certain scenes in an animated movie because they feel like, why, why the hell not? You know, if, if it's going to, to, to take away a complaint that we're going to have by somebody, then why the hell not do it? You know, there's so much great movies that I love that have been altered in the past by people. And... I always tell you guys to preserve your love of physical media and hold on to these movies on disc because who knows what's going to happen to these movies in years time. What's going to happen to them? How they're going to be altered or changed? And if they're and if they're even going to be put on streaming services. There's there's a whole issue with a whole bunch of stuff that goes down with with these companies and the shadiness that happens, man. But when you have physical media, when you have physical media copies, it doesn't matter what what it is, Back to the Future or anything like that, it can't get altered. It's special, and it's going to stay with us. No matter what the companies might try to change and do, we will have it on disc, and we will preserve the true movie in its true form. Just wanted to point that out, guys. Kind of interesting discussion that I was thinking about. Definitely let me know your thoughts on that, guys. And keep up to date with everything I'm doing through Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Film Fan 108. Keep up to date with everything I'm doing, plus special pictures and videos I do from time to time on social media as well. 
All right, guys, I will see you back next week for a brand new Blu-ray and DVD out and about video. Take care, everybody, and uh, happy hunting.